Uh -huh. Oh. Go. Praise God. Yep, praise God. We're good. Amen. It's time to get our service this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Let's thank Him this morning for another opportunity to look to Him this morning. Thank you, loving Father, for this morning, Lord, for one more opportunity you've given us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, to draw closer to you. This morning, we praise you and we thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, your mercy, your kindness, and your love, Lord, that you brought us here safely into your house this morning. Thank you, Jesus. In our hearts and our lives at night, and God, this morning, Lord, we'll be careful to give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. If you remain standing, let's turn to page 247 and sing that song, Fill My Way With Love. Page 247. With me walk, blessed Lord, in the way thou hast gone, leading straight to the land above. your goodness, your mercy, your love, your kindness, what has brought us to your house this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Lord Jesus, you're worthy to be praised this morning. As we give you the praise that you so richly deserve, Jesus, we thank you and we praise you, Jesus. Have your way this morning, Lord, as we give it all to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's good to be back in God's house this morning. Amen. That's right. Amen. Bear with us this morning. We're trying a new uh, program here on this um, screen. That uh, we've got um, brethren back there. To, uh, I would say figuring out. But yeah. If there's uh, any uh, mess ups, don't blame me. No. <laughs> No, 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 but just bear with us. Pray for Madison, Wisconsin, to try to go just, just a little extra. extra right, mile. right, that's right. Be in the two mile club. Right, there we go. So, uh, 
I'm praying for us this morning. But it's good to be back in God's house. Amen. Yes, it is. Amen. 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 That's right. A new year, uh, uh, new opportunities, uh, new everything. We right. right. said, oh, should already be new, preacher. It is already new, but we're going just a step further. As we share, I'm um, going to be in a two-mile club. Amen. As you said, if someone prepared you to go one mile, go two. Right. Amen. 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 That's it's right. Yes, sir. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I was in the back of the church, just uh, what, in the song service, and I to, but, but back there, listen to this, uh, the music and the song. I said, bro, I said, it sounds dead back here. And he said, well, we're in the back. <laughs> we're in the back. That's how it sounds. It sounds in the back. But when, you came, when I came a little bit further, it seemed so ex exciting right in the front. Right? That's right. Said, wow. Yes. It's like being in a concert, you know, you're right there sitting in the front, standing in the front seat, you know, they got the speakers right there, and they got the, uh, 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 what you call it, the bass, crazy! <laughs> you were, crazy! But when you're in the back, in the, uh, what you call it, the nose bleeding section, right. some seconds can't even hear, hear anything. But I'm thankful to be close to the Jesus Christ. Right, I'm amen. to be close to the uh, front of where things are happening. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. This is what I'll say something good for a little. Well, the blessed be the Sunday morning service is first Sunday of the year. Amen. And truly, I am excited about this being the first Sunday and us having made our way to the house of God, regardless of what the weather looks like out there. You know, we made up our mind to say, you know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to worship the Lord. And, you know, this year we were talking to me and my husband in the car coming to church. And, and I thought it was my Right. Church building. Yes, that's Amen. right. Yes. I said, well, what about a storefront? Uh, just settle for what you know. No. She said, ask him. Mm -hmm. You say, I will do it. Right? Yes. I believe in Christ. I believe in Christ. Yes. Preacher, uh, you're, putting, you're, you're putting yourself out there. No, I'm putting God out there. Right. Right. God, that's right. We was at the other place, um, at the smaller place, and we, we prayed. Some people was like, oh, you know, preacher, you're still here. Uh, you got three days left. Uh, you didn't get a place yet. I said, that's not my problem. That's not my concern. That's God's concern. Right. Yeah. Right. The Lord always makes a way. That's right. Yeah. He yes. makes a way. And, you know, people say he makes a way out of no way. But God, there is, he makes a way out of a way. Right. Because if God is doing it, it's always a way. Right. It's always a way. So we want your prayer. Amen. For each one of us, um, as we pray and continue to um, go forward for you. But this time we're going to be seeing all things. Our brother uh, uh, Joshua from the office. You give as unto the Lord, the Lord will receive that. And all Christians, you pay time. Amen. To cheerfully give in one of Our loving Father, we thank you for the first service of this new year, the first offering, God. God, we just ask that you bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 It's on there.
richly bless you. This time, sisters are going to sing a special song as unto the Lord. Amen. Ooh, our God is awesome today. Amen. Thank you, brother. I saw that. 
I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'd like to draw your attention to verse 1. One more time. Verse 1. The brother would hit that button one more time. Thank you, brother. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And this morning, we'd like to preach on a thought or message titled, Alter Your Altar experience. If you would hit that button one more time, brother. Alter your altar experience. Brother Najim, could you please pray up a message and message this morning, please? Heavenly Father, here we are again in your house, in your house, gather in your presence by the power of the Holy Spirit. We're here by your grace and we live here by your grace. Thank you, Father, for giving us the opportunity to be here, to worship you, to praise you, Thank you, Father. We know that you have a message for us this morning. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, yes, send down Jesus. your message and touch, to talk to of your people. Touch every single heart this morning. Father, we are waiting on you, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, clothe every single one with your garment of salvation in Jesus' name. Be our real God every Jesus. single day in the name of Jesus. Because you are our strength every single morning and our refuge in time of trouble. Father, we are here to hear from you, to know more for you. We're here to make another step forward, to learn to know you more. Father, help us, Father, be a good learner and a good listener. By the power of Holy Spirit, Father, we are waiting on you. Come and talk to us. Come and touch every single heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Um, just want to share it with the uh, sound crew back there. Um, I, can't, I can see whatever goes on in the screen because I'm looking at the screen from from here. <laughs> so I know what's on that screen back there. Yep. That's why I say hit the button because I know what's coming. <laughs> alter your altar experience. The altar is rooted in the heart of God. God never deviates from his original revelation to man. He may enlarge it he may expand it, but he never, he never deviates from his original revelation to man. After man had sinned in the Garden of Eden and was kicked out of the Garden of Eden, altars are mentioned afterwards. Although in Genesis chapter 4, an altar is not specifically mentioned. We do know that Abel made an acceptable sacrifice of the first fruits of his flocks unto the Lord. Yes. In Genesis chapter 4 and verse 3, it says, in, And in process of time, and it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Verse 4, And Abel, he also brought of the first things of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering. God plainly meets man at the altar. Yes, yes. The altar comes up again in the life of Noah, in the life of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. God eventually expands on the revelation of an altar when dealing with Moses. In the book of Exodus, chapter 20, Instructions are given on how an altar should be uh, built and placed at the front of the worship experience. Throughout scripture, altars are mentioned 370 times. The message is clear. God meets mankind at the altar. Hello? None of this is new to, each, in, to any of us this morning. As I read in our Bible reading, it said there in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, it said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, 
by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living, not a dead, but a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is, who, who, the pastor, no, which is your reasonable service. It went on to say we are called to an altered life. Paul beseeches us, he urges us, he pleads with us to live on the altar. He said that we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our, it's our reasonable. It's a service that God expects that his people do. A reasonable service. He was not talking about just a physical altar in a, in a building that we have access on Sundays and, and sometimes through the week. Not just his altar in the church here. He said, well, preacher, I'm waiting for the altar, for the service, to, for the church to open so I can get to the altar in the church. He wasn't just talking about that physical altar here. But he's talking about an altar altered lifestyle. An altered lifestyle. A way of living. Like driving in your car. In your house or an apartment. At work. We constantly lay our lives at the feet of Jesus. Amen. This morning we've laid our lives at the feet of Jesus. We find ourselves in the house of God. Yes. Hello? Amen. We find ourselves in the house of God this morning. Some may have come just around the corner and some I know some have come far away. Far away just to be in the house of God. Doesn't matter how many people are here. All that matters is if Jesus is here and you're here. Jesus said where two or three are gathered in my name. He said I'll be, in the midst. I'll be there in the midst of them. So he didn't say where two or three thousand are gathered in his name. He didn't say that. Because he knew that. Well he knew that through the annals of time how men and women their lifestyle would be. So he knew that where well, two or three are God. Be encouraged. You're there in my name. You're there on my behalf. You're there worshiping, worshiping me in spirit and in truth. Because he said in his word he, he wants those that, that come to him to worship him in spirit and in truth. We're constantly laying our lives at the feet of Jesus. A daily dying to our will, our way, our self, taking every day as unto the Lord. Take your everyday life, your everyday life, your sleeping, your eating, going to work, your watching TV, uh, walking around life, and place it in the hand of Almighty God. Place it. In God's hand as an offering. Because that's what it is. We're presenting our bodies a living sacrifice. We're presenting our bodies on the altar of God. Embracing what God does for you, I put down here, is the best thing you can ever do for yourself. Embracing what God is doing in your life. The Bible says to be not conformed to this world. Don't be so much trying to get you and yours and be a part of this culture that you fit right into it without even thinking. God does not want his people to be exactly like the world. It's quiet out there this morning. Can I get a big amen? amen. Yeah, praise amen. Yeah, praise God. <laughs> Instead, fix your attention upon him. You will be changed from the inside out. Amen. From the inside out. Recognize what he wants from you and respond to it. Ask yourself the question, what does God want out of my life this morning? What does he want me to do and to be like? It's really quiet in here. <laughs> Unlike the cultural I like the culture around you. God brings the best out of each one of us. 
developing you into the person he created you to be. Yes. God created us all. You know, the Bible says, um, the Bible didn't say this, but we are the apple in God's eye. Yes. Amen. Are you? Amen. We're highly favored before Amen. him. Blessed, Blessed and highly favored. This morning, it's hard to get people to come to a physical altar on Sundays. Did you know that? It's hard to, uh, when you begin to pray and you begin to say, Lord, draw men and women to the altar. To the altar. It's a reflection. It's so hard. It's a reflection or indication that the altar was avoided through the week. Mm. That's what I said, brother. When men and women who want to come to the altar physical altar. Maybe they didn't go to the altar at their house. Maybe they didn't lay their lives down in, as, uh, as a living sacrifice unto the Lord through the week. And then when the altar, that's what, this, what I'm preaching on. Alter your altar experience. Hello? Amen. Why do people, let me put down here, why do people avoid the altar. Wow. There's no way to sugarcoat this this morning. <laughs> There's no way to sugarcoat to make the altar attractive. Okay? People avoid altars because they're ugly. They're ugly. In fact, the Hebrew word for altar means to slay or to slaughter. Did you know that? Well, I thought coming to the altar, you, you pray, you begin to say, Lord, uh, bless me with this, bless me with that. Coming to the altar, you're laying yourself down at the altar as a living sacrifice. Slaying yourself at the altar before the Lord. Lord, here's my life. Did you know that? It's not coming to the altar with uh, your bag held up high and saying, Lord, fill it with material blessings. No. It's giving your heart, laying your life down at the altar. Did you know it's a paradox? When you lay your life down at the altar, God will fill that bag. That's right. Amen. He'll not only fill uh, your life with him, you experience him, uh, but he'll begin to fill your life with all the things that you desire. Yeah, that's right. Because he knows uh, that the things that you desire, you won't begin to, uh, how can I put it, in a nice way. Trade God off. Right. That's right. See, people are trying to get the things of the world first and then God second. Did you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But God wants people to put him first, seek ye first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the Bible says, and then what? All these things will be added unto you. Yeah, that's right. the, thing, the things that we're seeking for will be added unto us when we put him first. And that's in, in the ministry of every preacher and in, my, in the ministry that God has given us. Uh, we're trying to share with individuals put God first. Yes. And all these other things will be added unto you. Yes. Don't seek first all the other things and then say, well, I'm just going to put God in, in that thing when, and see what happens. I'll tell you what's going to happen. You're going to be sad. Yes. You're going to be sad because when you don't put God first, what the Bible says, he is a jealous God. He's jealous. Is this all right? Yes, it is. Well, pretty sure, you know, you need to go on because I need to see how, I'm gonna be, how can I be blessed. I'm letting you know how you can be blessed. I'm telling you, we're taking it this morning. Yes. Lay yourself down at the altar. You know what I'm saying? Go to the altar. Right. So, well, what about the other people coming to the altar, preacher? Yeah, their hands are. You all over the altar. Hey. <laughs> Go to the altar. Get, lay, it, lay it all down. Lord, here's myself. I'm laying it at the altar, God. I'm slaying myself at the putting myself to death. Do what you will with, with my life. And when a man or woman does that, Go back to the New Testament and it says, and all these things shall be added unto you. God knows. The Bible, Bible says that 
He give us the desire of our heart. Yes. We walk upright before him. That's right. It's not, oh, he give you the desires of my heart and just cut it off like that. I've got to walk upright. Got to show him, hey, Lord, I'm laying myself at this altar. I'm giving myself unto you, Lord. The altar means to slay or to slaughter. In the New Testament, the word altar, it means a place of sacrifice. A place of sacrifice. In the Old Testament, the priest, he was instructed to slit the throat of the animal and catch its blood. Then he, he had to sprinkle the sides of the altar with the blood and then pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. The priest, by duty, sacrificed almost 1,300 animals each year. This was not a job for the weak stomach individual. It was a gory daily task. But we must remember Genesis chapter 4 and verse 5 it says Cain brings a bloodless offering to God and is rejected. He did what he wanted to do. Not only was the sacrifice bloodless, it had already been cursed by God. Yes, that's right. yes. What are you saying, preacher? Cain may have thought it was all right to bring, to bring fresh fruit and vegetables rather than a bloody animal offering. But not on God's watch. We just can't come to God any old kind of way. Hello? Amen. That's right. He's a holy God. It's not like, well, this is the only sacrifice I can bring you, God. Oh, hey, you got to bring God the sacrifice that he wants. Right. Hello? Yeah. Hey, brother, could you go back? Go back. Just go backwards. It loop, so it's in the loop? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I don't know why. Just saying. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, in Genesis, excuse me, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, that you present, that you bring forth, you present your bodies, these about your bodies, a living sacrifice. He didn't say dead. A living sacrifice. Upright, living, for the Lord, living sacrifice, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, holy and acceptable unto God. Which is your reasonable service? Hello? Giving it as unto the Lord. Not just bringing God any old type of sacrifice. Hello? Not just doing what we want to do. As we saw one of the brothers did in the word of God. Bring God some fruits and vegetables. Well, this is all I got. It's one thing about the word of God. The Lord, he created all of us. And he knows what all of us can do. Do you know that? Now we're going, we're in a new year right here. We're in a new year. We're, we're trying uh, new things going forward. Going forward. Things that I've never even done. Not a sin, but things that I've never done in the work of God. Things that we're going forward. God is preparing this church for bigger heights. In order for this church to go to bigger heights. Each one of us. We can't just sit down and be the same way we always been. Because you do the same thing you've always did, you'll be the same way you've always been. You got to move a little bit further. You got to step out of that comfort zone. You got to allow each one of us, me included, you got to allow God to use you when you don't want to be used. <laughs> I'm going to say it just like that. When you don't feel like God using you. Lord, I don't know if I can do this, but God knows what you can do. He knows what he's called you to do. We have to step out of that comfort zone. Yes. Now, reminded him when God called me to preach. I, I was a shy guy. I couldn't stand in front of no crowd. I said, Lord, why I got to preach? Because I called you to preach. What I'm going to say? Preach the word. And don't be afraid. Jesus always said that in the word of God. Be not afraid. It is I. 
He always tells us, don't be afraid. As they were saying in the world, don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Because I am with you. He said, I'll always be with you even until the end of the world. Don't be afraid to do what the Lord has called you to do. Because of what it is. It could be uh, sharing the gospel with someone. It could be, I don't know, uh, it could be baking some cookies for somebody. It could be anything. I don't know what God called, is telling you to do. I was helping a man um, the other day. Um, he wanted me, if he's listening to this, he know what I'm talking about. I was helping him put um, some windshield wipers on his car. I just pulled up now. Hey, Pastor! You know, like, oh, Lord, what? He said, could you help him put some windshield wipers on the car? I said, well, I'll try to, you know. So I tried. I couldn't get him off. But he did. But I was there with him. Yes. And after the whole thing, I looked at his hands. He had no gloves. I said, you ain't got no gloves? So I went upstairs. Went upstairs and, and got these gloves that my wife had bought me um, for Christmas. And gave it to him. I ain't even put the gloves on yet. And gave them to him. I said, hey, man, you know, here's some gloves right here. My wife looked at me. I said, I'll buy some for him. <laughs> she probably was thinking, he ain't even wore the gloves yet. I bought those gloves for him for Christmas. <laughs> he said, well, you, you didn't, you didn't um, care that your wife bought you? No, but I know that God will bless me with some more gloves. Right. I'll get that other person, he didn't have any gloves. Yes. That's stupid, Pastor. Well, you can say it's stupid all you want to, but hey, you know, the, bro the brother got some gloves now. That's right. So, well, do you have gloves? Yeah, I had another pair of gloves. Hello? Hello? If the Lord shares with you to do something, just do it. Don't try to, oh, uh, how can I say it? Talk your way out of it. Right. You know? She right. said, get that man some gloves. You know, uh, <laughs> get that man, you got a pair of gloves upstairs. There was no thoughts in my mind like, well, you know, my wife bought those gloves and whatever. If I give them to my wife, is going to be upset. No. No, I just went and did and looked at her and stuff, and she knew. She, she knows me by now. She knows that if I give things away, if I do, do things, um, she goes back in her mind. All our bills are paid. Everything's, I have everything that I need and, and, and most of the things that I want. Hey, God is blessed. He's blessed our lives. Amen. Amen. And, and, and I know that my husband has a good heart, whatever it is, but he gives everything we got away. <laughs> but not really. There's nothing pretty, put down here, about the altar experience. Nothing pretty. God meets man at the altar. Yes. He meets man at, as man gives away his life, uh, laying his life down at the altar. He knew that in order for us to have life, we must taste death. The old man or the old woman must die. You're that old man, that old woman. You want The old man wants to do what he wants to do. But the new man and new woman, they want to do what Christ wants them to do. We're all here because Christ has led each one of us here to come to the house of God. The devil didn't tell you to come to church this morning. Hello? The devil's not going to preach a message about giving your life to Christ. So you know it must be a, a message out of the word of God. The devil's not going to tell you to lay your life as a living sacrifice on the altar before the Lord. And give your heart and your life totally, completely unto the Lord. Christians avoid the altar because it requires time. Requires time. Altars require preparation. Hello? Put down there. Altars requires adjusting schedule. Adjusting schedules. Yes. Altars require stopping and pausing and examining our inward man or woman. Yes. Altars require that. When you come to church, you know, sometimes, I always kind of throw this out there, sometimes people come to church and they want to know, how can you make my life better? How can I make more money? How can I get more blessings? How can I get, how can I put this world, uh, get this thing, this thing called life in this world? How can it be more advantageous? Advantageous. I know the word is in my mind, but I can't say it. I want 
advantageous to me. That's where you go wrong at. But one thing, we ain't going to be living forever. God, want, God wants all of us, I'm telling you, me included, to give our lives unto him. Holy and acceptable unto him as living sacrifices so that he can show the world that you ain't got to be like them. He'd still bless you with the same things. He'd still bless you. But we have to be what the Lord wants us to be for that. We can't bypass and say, well, uh, I'm just going to I'm going to uh, look like God is blessing me in the world and God, but really I'm blessing myself. Hello? Amen. Ain't no big amens at the morning. Hey, man, go ahead, man. My prayer is God. I'm going to preach without y'all saying anything. <laughs> Jesus' altar experience is a perfect example of our attempt to not only avoid but to sanitize. Jesus' experience at the altar was one of pain. He prayed, the Bible says he prayed till his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling to the ground. Now people would say, well, he prayed. He prayed blood. But did you read the Bible? Hello? Luke chapter 12, 22. Luke, St. Luke chapter 22, verse 44. It says, and being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. It didn't say it was blood. It said was as it were great drops of blood falling to the ground. Ding! So when you hear one of the preachers, yeah, Jesus pre he prayed, he prayed so hard that he began to sweat blood. Read the word of God. He took his time. He took his time. There was an inward examination. Remember what Jesus said when he's praying to God? He said, not my will. He says, not my will. He discovered he had a will, I put down there, and it was in direct opposition to what the Father desired. Yes. Yes. He knew he was going to the cross. And that flesh, the flesh, the man, the flesh, the man, I can say, he was very much man in the flesh. But he was God the Son. Jesus. And he felt in his flesh. His flesh, you know, your flesh don't want to do anything that God wants you to do. That's why he said, not my will. Not this flesh. Not what uh, this flesh wants to do. He said, not my will, but thine be done. He crucified the flesh. It's not this gospel. It's the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. When you live for the Lord, it's not a uh, uh, a gospel that the world is attracted to. It's only those that Christ has changed the born again experience. When he's changed a man or woman's life, uh, the way that they think, be not conformed. That's what the Bible says in uh, Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You got to prove God. Not the church, not the pastor. You, you prove God. You prove God when you come to him. When you lay your life down at the altar as a living sacrifice. When you begin to not be conformed to this world. And allow him to transform you by the renewing, the renovation, the metamorphosis, brother, right. of your mind. Right. When I was a young man, I used to watch Dr. Bruce Banner. <laughs> Bruce Banner. He was affected by gamma rays. <laughs> you don't know nothing about that. The Bible, not the Bible, but at that, <laughs> the Bible said it. But as Bruce Banner was affected by these gamma rays, he began to turn into something that he didn't want to turn into. He turned into this green monster, which was called the Hulk. His, his body began to be transformed on the outside. His, his, his muscles began to get bigger and his, his begin to burst out of his shirt. I remember when Lou Ferrigno played, played that part. I'm an old guy. But as it began to change, 
he changed. He, he changed. He metamorphosed. That's what the word metamorphosis means. To be transformed. God not only wants us to be transformed from the outside, but most of mostly from the inside. Yes, that's right. When we're changed from the inside, the things on the outside begin to change. We begin to think differently. We don't look at, I'm going to say it now, we don't look at the white man that's against us. Now, I said it. We don't look at, we don't look at uh, different nationalities and say, well, you know something, uh, uh, this race is better than this race. No, we don't look at it like that. Because God, the Bible says, is not a respecter of persons. Heaven is not going to be blacks on one side and whites on the other. Well, that's all, that's all I need to hear. I didn't need to come at this church. <laughs> the pastor trying to put blacks and whites together. No, that's not Bible. Really? It's not? Well, what about this happening and that happening? Uh, they treated us wrong. Get saved. Born again. Invite Christ into your heart, into your heart and your life, and you'll begin to find out that, that Jesus takes all that junk out. I don't look at a, a, a brother as white or black. I look at him as a brother or sister. Hello? Amen. Really? He gets that junk out of your heart. Why? Because it's not godly. Well, I can't. You know, yeah, you can't change the past, but you can change yourself. You can change yourself. Allow Christ to change you from the inside. The way you think. Be not conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hello? Amen. It's, not, it's not popular preaching. You know, I'm not here uh, pushing people. How can I say it? Um, dividing the races or anything like that. Christ brought men and women together. An inward examination. Examining ourselves from the inside. Jesus discovered that he had a will that was in direct opposition to what the Father wanted done. <laughs> I put down here, we don't want any altar work. We don't want any altar work. Preacher, just pray for me. I don't need all that. Just pray for me. Let God bless me or whatever. And I'll be on my merry way and whatever. And just believe that the Lord has just blessed me in this life. But Jesus says, according to your faith, be it done unto you. People's avoidance to the altar has caused them to become a generation that loves worship more than the word. That's like Saul. Worshiping music soothes the demons inside of some people. Oh, I just want to come. Uh, you want to pray at the altar? No. Nope. You want to pray? No. Nope. Just, just leave me alone. I'm worshiping. Oh, God. And God's like, hey, you need to pray. You need to get down on your knees. You need to just examine yourself. What? what? What you're doing, your life is not your life is contrary to what the word of God is sharing. Well, we're just flesh and bone. He knows my spirit. He does know your spirit. And it may not be of God. So he wants you to examine yourself to see, the Bible says, that if you're in the faith. That's what worship is all about. Examining ourselves. Coming to that old-fashioned altar and say, Lord, open my heart. Have you ever prayed? Have you ever prayed? If you need here, I dare you to do this. Lord, show me myself. Mm -hmm. Let's go home and look in the mirror. And say, Lord, show me myself. You say, what's going to happen? Nothing may not happen while you're standing in the mirror. But I guarantee you when you walk out, when you walk out that bathroom, wherever that mirror is at, when you walk out, God will show you yourself. Something's going to happen. Something's going to happen that uh, uh, in your heart, in your mind, or whatever, somebody may say something or whatever, something may happen, and then all of a sudden God says, see, that's you. That's you. This is not popular preaching. And I'm not trying to be a popular preacher. <laughs> God's word 
drives out the demons. It's at the altar that we surrender to his word and to his will. Doesn't even have to be the church, but you got to get to an altar for your life to change. Got to get to an altar. We want to feel good without becoming good. That's what I put down there. A life without the altar becomes a worldly life. We always have to die to ourselves daily. Die to this flesh. Die to the old man, the old woman. Die to our flesh. Putting ourselves on the cross. Like Jesus died on the cross, he died for you and I. But when we come to Christ, we die to ourselves. That's what the altar experience is all about. We begin to think when we're not going to the altar daily, we begin to think like and act like the culture that we're, that's around us. We begin to be just like the people in the world. There's no change. There's no change. Divorce rate high. Entertainment choices the same. Fashion sense the same. Attitude the same. Goals the same, stress the same. Nothing's changed if you act like the world, you talk like the world, you look like the world, you are, you are the world. If you they do the same things the world does, Christ and the gospel, when Jesus comes into our hearts and our lives, he wants the world to see that there is a difference between, not just in talk, but in everything. You will have the full package. You know what I'm saying? The full package. Everything. The looks, the attitude, uh, everything about you will be godly. Hello? Yeah. And God has patience. He has patience. Man doesn't, but God does. If a pastor, if he's a godly man, he'll have patience with individuals. Lord, Lord God, what's going on? Have patience, my son. Paul is clear that we need a place of death to kill the old man. He's clear that it's only at the altar that we fight off the tendency to become more like the world than our king. It's only at the altar. So when I say altar, what are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about prayer. The altar experience. Prayer. I remember when I was a young man, I, I came to church and I sat in the back of the church and the preacher was preaching and as he preached, uh, uh, he gave an altar call. Had anybody bow their heads and close their eyes? And he said, if the Lord touched your heart, why don't you slip up your hand and slip it right back down? I want to pray for you. And I looked up with one eye to see if anybody was looking. And I lifted up my hand right quick and I put it down. He said, I saw that hand back there. God bless that hand. You can put it down. He said, I'm going to separate the men from the boys. He said, if you lift up your hand, why don't you come to this altar in the front? And as I was sitting in the back of that church, <laughs> with my head down like this, I said, oh, no, I ain't, going, I ain't going up there. Why don't you go up to the front? No. Nope. It's, like, it's like an angel on one, maybe the spirit of God on one side and the devil on the other side. You know you need to go to the front. And one side I said, you're going to look like a fool going up there. People going to laugh at you. You know you need to go to the front. Go to the altar. No, don't go to the altar. There's nothing going to happen to you. And you're just going to look stupid. And as these voices going through my head, back and forth, I began to get up out my seat. And I began to walk to the front. Was those voices still happening? Yes, those voices were still. You look going to look stupid. People are like, oh, you got to look stupid. And I kneeled down at the altar and I put my head down at the altar and I began to pray, Lord, do something in my life. I know I'm not, and you know, I, and, one man, and a man came and put his arm around me. He said, excuse me, sir. He said, if you were to die this morning, would you go to heaven? And I said, you know, he said, have you ever prayed and asked Christ into your heart or your life? I said, you know something, man? That's exactly right. He said, you know something? I said, I grew up in church. And I prayed that prayer, Lord, come into my heart, make me a new creature. And I, and, I, and I left the church the same way. I said, I thought something's supposed to happen. I thought that you're supposed to change. 
And he said, has anybody ever told you to just believe? Believe the word of God. Believe that the Lord will change your heart and your life. And he will do that. And I, look, and I put my head down and I begin to say, Lord, change me. And I had a, a picture in my mind of Jesus on the cross. And it seemed like Jesus looked down off the cross and looked at me right in the face when I was kneeling down there. And he said, I'm doing this for you. He did it for each one of us personally. And as I got up from that altar, you said, did you feel anything different? No. But I knew that when a person gets saved, when a person is genuinely born again, the Lord tells them to do something. <laughs> and the Lord told me, you know what he told me to do? I'm going to go for it. He may not tell you to do anything like this, but he told me, go home and get rid of all your worldly music. Now I'm, I'm dated. That's how old I am. LL Cool J. Earl Klug, David Sanborn, Jazz, all this cool stuff. I run DMC. I, I, I had all the music. Go home and get rid of that junk. That doesn't glorify me. Did you, did you have a problem doing that? No. I didn't have a problem doing that because I was tired of the way that I was living. When a fan or woman gets tired of the way that they're living, they will do anything to change their lives. So that was the first thing that the Lord, he, I, I would say that he gave me a test. If you, if you really love me, go home, go home and get rid of that music. Some people are like, oh, no, I ain't getting rid of that. Crazy. I love God. I ain't got to do all that. That's just overboard. So I did. And you know what? What happened? God blessed me with more godly music. Hello? Amen. And then as I begin to live for the Lord, uh, continue to live for him, he began to share some other things. You know, I used to wear my hat to the side. He said, wear your hat right. <laughs> or get rid of it. It's just certain things that God tells certain people. Yes, that's right. Not everybody. Because he's trying to deal with your character and with your pride. That's all. Drove around a car. Had this car just bought me. This was it just bought way back in 1987. Brand new. Got the windows tinted. It was a nice car. But you know something? I got saved. <laughs> and I couldn't afford the payments. So I got rid of the car. It was a nice car, tinted glass. It was, nice. it was very nice. And what was the car that God blessed me with afterwards? <laughs> I walked to the dealership. And as I walked to the dealership there in Washington State, Tacoma, Washington. I walked to the dealership and I asked these guys in this dealership. It was a, a used car lot. I said, what's the cheapest car y'all got on the lot? And somebody heard me in the back. They said, sell them the station wagon. So I said, what's the station wagon? So the guy said, come here, I'll show you what it is. So he went to the back, went out the back door and he pushed these two other cars aside. And it was a 1976 LTD station wagon that was sitting there in the, in the, in the back was just rusted all out. The seats were all cut up like somebody took knives up in the front seat with one of those big long couch seats in the front. I said, how much you want for this? He said, three ninety nine. dollars I said, well, I ain't got no, we'll take payments. So I gave him $50 and drove that car off the lot. And the next morning, the mufflers fell off the car. It can't, it was just falling off. So I just pulled them off, two mufflers. And all of a sudden, when I started the car, it was loud. Da, 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 da. Then pushed on the guy. Da, 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 da. Oh my God! Every time I stopped at a, at a stoplight, I never wanted to pull off in front of other cars because when I pulled off, that car was loud. Da, 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 da. People looking around, what is going on? <laughs> but I was picking people up for church. Praise God! I was doing something for God. When these people got in the car and we go to church, we couldn't even hear each other. <laughs> Praise God! You're coming to church! Hallelujah! And we take them back home. We couldn't even hear each other in the car. So one day, as I was driving, I was going to get these mufflers. For you. One day, I was driving. This guy passed this uh, uh, muffler shop. And this guy, he was sitting outside smoking a cigarette. He, I, as I passed, he did like this. So I came over. He said, man, I'll I fix your mufflers for 100 bucks. All you got to do is he, and he took these two mufflers and put them on the car. And he, uh, when I went back there, and I was going to try to start the car. He said, no, man, don't start. It's already started. Couldn't even hear the car. So I drove it off the drove it off the muffler thing. This is so. 
And I went to pick up the people for church. I said, can, do y'all know anything that's different? And they was like, no. I said, we got the mufflers fixed. We can hear each other. Why don't you tell that story, preacher? Because God was dealing with my pride. He was dealing with my pride. Because he wanted to show me that, hey, it's me that blesses you. Did you ever, did you keep that LTD station wagon forever? Do you still got to no. know? No, as we begin to allow the Lord to deal with the truth within him. Know the truth, the Bible says, and the truth shall make you free. As we allow the Lord to deal with our hearts and our character, that's where we grow. We grow and God says, hey, they won't put anything else before me because they love me. And he sees our heart. He sees, he sees what's on the inside of us. Not only outside, but on the inside. And that's where he blesses when we walk upright before him. So, well, well, preacher, are you talking to somebody specific? No, I'm not talking. This is a general message. It's all about slaying ourselves at the altar. Allowing Jesus to alter our altar experience. Hello? Amen. That's all. Well, preacher, you ain't, you, ain't uh, you ain't tell me um, how I can get uh, more finances through this week. You ain't tell me how I can get blessed in this life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things be added unto you. Period. I just told you. That's all you got to do. And yield yourself. Yield yourself to the promptings of the Holy Ghost. And don't try to change yourself the way that you think that you should change. Don't bring your own sacrifice to God. But bring the sacrifice that he wants. And that's of a contrite heart. Yielding your life unto him this morning. With that, let's all bow our heads, close our eyes, and grab the Lord. As the brother would call it, Sisters, back to the service. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Heavenly Father, I shared exactly what you wanted me to share this morning. I did exactly what you wanted me to do. I was not afraid. Lord, knowing it's not a coincidence that all of us are here this morning. But you've led each one here, Lord, for one purpose. And one purpose only. And that is to draw near to you. I ask the Lord, as your servant and as your disciple, you by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit this morning will help all those that are here to draw closer to you. You shared in your word that if we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. You put it in our corner this morning, Lord. We must first draw near to you that you may draw near to us. I ask God this morning that you would answer every petition, every prayer that is uttered in this place this morning. That one that's here this morning do not know you this morning, Lord. Help them, Lord, to invite you into their heart knowing that you're well able to transform them 
For your word says, Lord, that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Let them know of a surety this morning, God, that when you or when they invite you into their hearts, that you will accomplish your will. Does not happen overnight, but Lord, help them to know that you're here this morning to help them through your word and through your spirit as you shared in your word that we must worship you in spirit and in truth. I thank you this morning, Lord, for your love toward each one of us this morning in this place. Your love from your word, from your people, Knowing, God, that you are the same God yesterday and today and forever that helps men and women draw closer to him daily. The altars are open this morning. Come. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. While there's still time. Make up your mind. You can't be happy. Living on. The borderline. If you only knew. God's plan. For you. You would wait. Or hesitate. While there's still time. Thank you Jesus. For those that have come to the altar this morning. Let's all find a place to pray this morning. Spend a few minutes before the Lord this morning Hallelujah. and allow the Spirit of God to speak to you this morning. God bless you is our prayer.
praise God. You wouldn't wait. You wouldn't wait. Or hesitate. Or hesitate. While there's still time. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. While there's still time. Make up your mind. You can be happy. Help us, Jesus, and she. Living on the all that you call us to be. One more time, sister was while there's still time. While there's still time, there's still time this morning. Make up your mind. You can be happy living on the borderline. If you only. Praise the Lord. Brother Josh Rito, could you stand and pray? Let the church say amen. amen. Praise God. Come back tonight, 6.30. Hallelujah. Message sermon entitled, A Bond for Life. Amen. God bless you. It's our amen. prayer this morning.